Thanks for watching our tutorial about our SAML single sign on app um, and one login using our user sync functionality. UserSync uses the API from OneLogin that we implemented to synchronize users from OneLogin into the Atlassian application and then we use the SAML part of our app to authenticate these users afterwards. This will essentially be um, done in two steps. Um, we'll first configure the UserSync functionality and then afterwards we'll move on to um, configure the SAML functionality uh, for the authentication. We'll now start off with the configuration of um, the user sync functionality. Um, we'll kick off in uh, one login, create a API endpoint and the um, uh, some credentials to use that. Then move over to um, Jira and finish the user sync configuration there. Do a synchronization and then also check um, that we actually successfully enable or successfully synchronized all the users. Uh, that we require and afterwards we'll move on to the SAML part to do um, the authentication of these users. So let's get started. I'm logged into one login so I need to go to administration and then under developers there's a section API credentials. I need to do a new credential. Let's give that Jira demo Jira. Uh, we only need the read users um, part of the API because we only synchronize one way from one login into um, Jira, so read users is enough. So let's say save here. And now it gives me a client ID and a client secret. That's what I'll need in a second in, the, um, in our uh, plugin in the Atlassian application. So I already copied the client ID and then I move over to um, Jira now. Right, this is my demo instance. You see it only, uh, it only has an admin user. Um, we'll synchronize an additional user in there via user sync in a minute. So let's um, start with the user sync configuration. And user sync has the uh, concept of connectors. So basically um, every remote system or API that we implemented is a connector here. So we want to create an instance for one login connector that adds the connector and um, we'll see the configuration page in a second here. So let's say prod one login. So the default is this um, US API. If you're in the EU region then you may have to change it to the EU um, API uh, depending on what you've chosen uh, when you created your one login account. So first it wants the client ID here. Let's paste that and I Go swap back to one login to copy the client secret as well. And I can then say done here. So let's paste the client secret in here too. Oops, sorry. And um, now um, one login has the concept of um, groups and what it's called the member of attribute. That's where the groups usually are when you. Um, uh, synchronize other remote systems like LDAP or Active Directory. Um, that is the default. Um, since we haven't, um, haven't got a federated Active Directory there, we actually want to um, uh, use um, the role sections or the role memberships as uh, groups in Jira. So if you activate the settings groups from roles, then your um, role memberships will be synchronized as groups into um, to Jira. You could also, if you have group memberships in one login, I know, complicated concept, uh, but one login also has groups, if you, uh, but they are rarely used actually. Uh, but if you use groups in one login and you want those groups to be transported as groups into Jira, then the third setting is um, what you want. You can also combine them. Um, for this tutorial, we'll stay on groups from roles. And um, that's most of the settings that we have to do here. Um, let me, however, say one thing here with the um, required one login groups. If you don't want all of your users um, synchronized over to, um, uh, to Jira, only um, a selected few, for example, um, then you can specify um, a group here uh, to limit that. And depending on uh, which ones you've chosen here, 
Um, this will be obviously, uh, in, in our case, it will be the role name that we want to limit, or you can have multiple, the, or even a regular expression, but um, the role name that we want uh, limited here. Um, I can actually do that. Um, for me, it will be Jira Software Users. That's how I called the role in uh, one login. Um, so only users in that role essentially will get synchronized via this connector now. Um, let's have a quick look at provisioning settings. I'm not going to go into details here. There's a lot more in the documentation. And also, if you get stuck or need some advice, then uh, please reach out to our support. Um, we really love to help you um, and share um, our experience with setting that up. Because a lot of customer uh, circumstances are different, so there is not really a one-size-fits-all for everything. Um, so uh, if your situation doesn't quite match the tutorial here, then please reach out. Um, here you can choose always assign uh, users to a certain group, um, then that group will always be added um, to the user synchronized. Um, you can, in the attribute mapping section, you can actually, um, yeah, essentially um, map more attributes from the um, one login API into additional fields in, um, in, in your Atlassian application. Um, but the probably um, most important section here as well is the group management. By default, uh, we will treat one login as a single source of truth for group memberships. So if a user is in a group role or member of attribute, whatever you've chosen in the previous section, um, we'll replicate exactly that in, um, in the Atlassian application. With those settings um, here, with those three settings on the screen, you can actually filter those. Um, you can also um, implement something that you can have a mix of local groups um, and, and some groups assigned from one login or even go the other extreme, have no groups assigned from one login and just everything um, assigned at local groups with different settings in those. Again, I'm not going to go into details here. Um, there's also a video about group management here if you want to watch that, um, just so that you've heard it. So let's go to the last thing, which is sync settings. Um, I'm going to turn on scheduled synchronization. So by default, um, once an hour, we synchronize all users. Um, that's a cron expression, so you can adjust it um, to your liking. Um, if you have a huge account, if this once an hour is fine for usually up to five, six, seven thousand users. Um, um, easily. Um, if you have um, larger instances, um, then you can adjust it down to uh, fewer sync intervals. And again, uh, reach out to us if you want to have some advice. So I'll leave it to the default here and say save and return. So now we have this um, prod one login connector. It's never synced. Let's just quickly synchronize it. It won't take too long because um, we only have one user in our one login uh, test instance. And there we are can actually see one user was added. So I can close this now. And you see done with success. Um, that's um, all that we wanted. Let's just quickly um, check things. So I'm going to go to user management. And there you see there's the CR demo Jira user that we synchronized in. It's in the prod one login directory. Um, and just to mention that if I look at user directories here, um, what UserSync actually does for every connector, it creates its own directory, here in this case prod one login, and that directory will behave um, like any other internal directory of an um, Atlassian application um, here. So um, we've now got the user in here, um, the synchronization worked, um, so that's all we wanted. Now we have our user in, um, in the Atlassian application. Now, in order to authenticate this user, um, we obviously um, need to set up the SAML side of things. Now, we need to go to SAML single sign-on. And once we go there for the first time, it will actually show us our uh, getting started wizard. What we want to do here is add new identity provider of the type one login. That already means we know a lot of pre-configuration that we can do. Um, now we click on to next and copy this base URL here. 
And now we'll move over to um, one login to configure the SAML site in one login and afterwards return to our plugin configuration here, uh, complete the configuration and then test it as well. So let's go to one login and we want to move here to applications, add application and then this is the catalog let's search for resolution we already have a catalog app that a lot of pre-configuration is already done so let's put that in here select that um, let's give it a good display name uh, select something that makes sense to your users because that's the name that they will see in their um, in their user dashboard um, also maybe um, consider changing the icon so that, um, that it is something that makes more sense to them. Let's say save. Go to configuration here. Here's we paste the base URL. Uh, let's remove the HTTPS part of it. Uh, we only need the um, uh, subdomain part. Let's um, say save then. Let's go quickly to access. Here we can now um, select which um, users or which roles have access to this application and can use it. It's in SAML. Um, we've uh, used the Jira software users role before, so I'll take that here as well. That um, um, both is fine because we only synchronized um, users with the Jira software users role into our Atlassian application. If you have not limited that, um, then you can also use the default role or use something that's more specific and more sensible to your one login setup. Um, let's click save here. And then I can actually check under users that my demo user actually has access to this application. So that's uh, one way um, of confirming that. So one last thing we need to do here is under more actions, right click the summer metadata copy this link address because the metadata gives us a lot of information about the IDP, the certificate being used, links, etc. So we can just easily import that via this URL um, as opposed to, uh, to you having to cut and paste a lot between the two applications. So back to our plugin then. Let's go to next here and here we're expecting the metadata URL and I can say import here. Metadata import was successful. Great, let's go to next. Here the plugin wants to know if the usernames in um, one login are exactly the same as the usernames in uh, Jira. Um, in this tutorial that's the case because we actually use our plugin to synchronize those users in there. Um, if that isn't quite the situation you're in and you need to have some um, mixing and matching of usernames um, from other sources, then reach out to our support because there's a lot of things that you can do with um, doing regular expressions, using different attributes, etc. Um, to make that happen to, um, to get to good situations um, with disparate user bases. Um, and, but that's not for this tutorial here. So let's go to next then. Uh, now the um, plugin is asking if we want to use any of its provisioning features. Uh, you could leave this on no and it would still work because the user is already on um, synchronized in. Um, but um, I would suggest you use the update from user sync connector and then you can um, select the prod one login connector that we created before. Um, the good thing about this setup is then we will make a um, single user update whenever a user logs in. So. Um, um, that means when a user logs in, we refresh that user's information from one login during that login um, so that uh, the user is always um, in there with the freshest of information. That's what this update from user sync connector um, does and it's a, um, a really good feature. So I really recommend to turning that on. Let's go to save and next then. And that's pretty much it. Now we can get to the point where we can actually test our settings. Let's click start here. That creates an authentication tracker and gives me this special URL which I'm going to copy here. And I'm going to open that URL now in an incognito vid window. That will redirect me to one login, get me back into Jira, hopefully successfully um, log me in. 
and um, then we can go back um, uh, to this page here where we can see a lot more uh, debugging results of that. So let's open the incognito window, paste the URL. So now I get redirected to one login. Let me do that and Now I get redirected back to the um, uh, to Jira, and you see it's the first time I log in. I get the uh, welcome visit for the CR local one user, so uh, we said we were successfully authenticated, um, and it worked fine. So back to the other page of our plugin, you can now see this tracker um, is a success. Um, the user is logged in. Um, there's a lot of debug messages. Um, login information, um, the user sync update that we did and the results of it, um, down to even um, the summer request, the summer response. So this tracker actually contains a lot of debugging information. So if you would have had any problem, um, this not resulting in a success, you could just click the um, contact support button below and that would open a um, service request in our Jira service management. Uh, and you could also choose to attach this stra uh, tracker straight away so that we can get a lot of information um, what went wrong um, and can help you um, nearly instantly. You can also download this tracker, but since this was a success, there's nothing more to do for us here. So let's click on next. And now we're on the last page of the um, wizard. Um, I'm going to enable SSO redirect here. Um, and so nothing we have done so far actually interfered with users login. So they still got their username password prompt. Once I do this enable SSO redirect and say safe and close here, um, every user will get sent to um, that tries to log in will get sent to um, uh, one login. So um, if that's not what you want in terms of um, because you prefer to uh, do that in the maintenance window and after informing your users, then just leave that box unchecked, say safe and close, and then you can always go back here in redirection and enable this uh, redirection at the later stage and then say safe in the plugin configuration. So that concludes our tutorial for um, um, one login with user sync and our summer authentication. I hope you found it useful. Um, as always, um, we're here to help, so um, please contact our support if you want to um, raise any questions, have any problems. You can also schedule screen share sessions with us where we can actually interactively troubleshoot something with you or help you with your setup or answer some more complicated questions and give you advice. So we're really here to help and really enjoy that. So please take us up on it. Have a great day.